Hi guys, welcome to Make With Me Monday. My name is Robin French Smith. Today is Monday, so it's time to make something together. Um, hello, hello, hello. Sorry I'm running a few minutes late. I had a delivery for FedEx that I had to sign for. And of course he came like right at 11.54 or something like that. So um, today, we're going to paint bath bombs. So I see this, wait, we've had a few, we've had a few painting bath bombs um, make with me Monday. So this is not like, you know, anything that we haven't seen before. If you've been watching make with me Monday for a while, but it might be new and you might learn something new. And I might say something new this time that I've never said before. I don't know. Um, I have Facebook going over here and I have YouTube over here. So if you don't like this angle of Facebook, which I don't particularly like it, <laughs> I don't feel like the light is great for that angle. Then you could go to YouTube and I feel like the light is better for YouTube. I don't know, but I have both going at the same time. And that way, if one drops, the other one can pick it up, right? So um, I have these little nutcracker bath bombs uh, that I made and let's paint these. Nectaria says, hello, watching while you package up boxes and you may be leaving early to buy a microwave. Oh my God. And, uh, also that you love that I'm on YouTube as well. Thank you. YouTube has been very nice to me. I have to say so far, <laughs> we'll see what happens. You know, you never know, but I'm just going to, so for YouTube, I'm just going to put it, the camera down like that. And you're just going to basically see the bath bomb. So even though it has the better lighting, you're not going to see my face. Okay. So the first thing I like to do when I'm painting bath bombs is I like to dust them off. They have little crumblies on them from the process of getting made. Um, so I'm gonna dust them off, okay? And I've already dusted the guys that are up in this top row, but I'm gonna dust this one just because, you know, I saved it for you guys so you could see. And I don't know if the resolution is good enough that you can see all the little crumbles, but there's like tons of little crumbles on the back. There you go. You can see them all like right there. All these crumbles and stuff. So anyway, I have a I have a trash can underneath me. So I'm not just dusting this off into the floor. Although there's no problem with doing that. You know, just say that's not what I'm doing. So I'm going to use a, a paintbrush and or my finger it just kind of depends on where the dust is on the back. Um, a paintbrush might not be uh, necessary, like my finger probably can do just as fine, but on the front where there's like these little detailed areas, um, you know, I wanna make sure that there's no like little crumbs down in those cracks because when you start painting, you'll drag those crumbs all over your bath bomb and it's super annoying. Let's try to fix this for you, Facebook. I, I'm sorry, I don't know what the dealio is okay i just don't i just don't know i'm doing the best i can okay is that a little better <laughs> maybe for you maybe not for me let's see one more we'll do one more adjustment and we'll stop messing with it okay so the colors i have picked out for this are uh, a brown for this little thing right here i think he's standing on like a pedestal or something so brown, green for his pants, and that's good because we can talk about painting bath bombs with green mica. Um, red for his jacket. I have a gold picked out for his belt and his buttons, although I might do his buttons black. His beard, I've been debating leaving it white or silver. I have both pulled out. Um, for his face, I have honey blush. I may do different skin tones. Sometimes I do different skin tones. I have three, so I might do like a fair, medium, and dark skin tone because I like to be inclusive for everybody. Um, and then black. We have black picked out for his hat. So those are the colors I have picked out. And I like to have 
just a lot of paintbrushes. <laughs> just a lot of paintbrushes. I like to have just a lot. I like to have as many paintbrush options as possible, okay? Ugh, I'm so sorry, Facebook. I just don't know, okay? I just don't know what's the best for you. A fourth one, a fourth chair. And that's because um, I always... I don't know. There's always another thing I want to paint with. Um, the other thing that I do is I'm going to lightly spray my bath bombs with 91% isopropyl rubbing alcohol. We may not have time to paint all of them in this session. We may only paint like three um, because it takes longer when I'm talking to you <laughs> than when I'm just like doing it at home, you know, without you guys there. I, you know what? This is a real problem for you guys. Hold on. The, the glare is a real problem for you guys. I have to fix this. Otherwise, you're just going to not be able to see anything. Let me pull this back and see if that helps with it. Just washing out the white so harshly. No, not really. Okay, well, whatever. <laughs> I gave it my best shot. Okay, um, so I sprayed the bath bomb with 91% isopropyl rubbing alcohol. I also have my micas over here, and I'm going to go ahead and just keep shuffling things around. Um, I'm going to scoot my guys up, and then we're going to talk about the micas that I have picked out. Um, in this one, we have uh, Black Pearl. And to the black, I'm also going to add, uh, in addition to the isopropyl rubbing alcohol that I'm going to use to paint with, I'm also going to add just a tiny bit of polysorbate 80. Um, I find that black pearl is the least likely black mica in my experience to stain. Uh, there's some other ones from Nurture Soap like nocturnal black, which is a really nice deep dark black, but it stained my tub in my last house and I could not get that stain out. Even when I moved, it was still there. Couldn't ever get it out. Um, black Pearl, she won't do that. However, Black Mica, just in general, she's going to be a little bit more messy. So I always add, whoop, this is brand new bottle too, you can tell. I always add a little bit of polysorbate 80 to my black paint. And you can do that for any mica. Like if you have any mica that just is like a problem child mica, it's always sticking. It's always, I have a, a couple reds and I have a couple purples that I do that with as well, just because for some reason they're more sticky and they cause more issues. Um, I already have a gold in here. It's Gilded Age from Muddy Soap Co. They don't have that color anymore, but Honey Pot is a very similar one. This is Firecracker from Nurture Soap. Uh, you can use any hot pink. Hot pink is going to translate as red when you paint it on a bath bomb. It is not going to look hot pink. Trust me. I've tried to get a hot pink. It's harder to get hot pink. I've tried really hard to get hot pink. That is hard. So any of your hot pinks are going to look red. So don't stress about that. This is probably antique silver, but maybe not. But it's a silver from TKB. I It's probably not antique silver because I think I ran out. But it's another polished silver. One of those from uh, TKB. Uh, this is Sexy Stranger on a Train. You could also use, for, that's from Mad Micas. You could also use Mocha Brown from Nurture Soap. This is Honey Blush from Nurture Soap. It is my favorite starting point for skin tones because you can go up or down. You can make your skin tones darker or lighter. Um, and so it's a really good starting point. And then um, I saved this. So we're going to, let's do uh, our white. So I'm going to do Winter White Mica. And sometimes I also add a little bit of titanium dioxide here, YouTube, sorry. Sometimes I also add a little bit of titanium dioxide to my white. I'm not going to do that this time because I'm painting on a white bath bomb. If I was painting on, uh, oh, I already moved them. I have some like red bath bombs for Santa that um, it's going to be hard for this white mica to like pop against that red. I would probably include a little bit of titanium dioxide in that. And then lastly for green, uh, when we're talking about using green micas, they have to be approved for use in bath bombs. If your supplier um, tells you it's approved for use in bath bombs, but then you look at the ingredients and the ingredients include things like chromium green oxide or ultramarine blue, they are not approved for use in bath bombs. So your supplier is deceiving you. <clears throat> Just going to clear my throat there. I'm not going to call them out, but there is some suppliers who do that. I don't appreciate it. Um, it, yeah, 
just because it's safe for use in bath bombs does not mean it's approved for use. How about that? I'll just, I'll just go there. Okay. Cause that's how that particular supplier tries to get around that. They're like, well, it is safe to use. And I'm like, anyway. Okay. So I'm going to use shimmer apple pop from TKD, but these are for his pants and I want his pants to be more of a hunter green color. <clears throat> so I'm going to actually add some of this Dublin green. So I'm going to do a half and half. I haven't tried this combination, but I feel like it's going to work. And these greens, uh, these, these greens and blues that are approved for use in bath bombs, um, they are going to have, usually they're going to have lakes in them. So this one says mica, titanium dioxide, blue one lake, yellow five lake, tin oxide, iron oxide. And so then it's approved for use in lips, which means it's approved for use in bath bombs because... <laughs> lips <laughs> quote air quote air quote okay um so they the lakes though have a tendency to bleed so when you're painting with these um ones that are approved for use in bath bombs a good idea is to paint that color last after you sprayed your bath bomb so i sprayed it and then it's kind of still wet so if i painted with this green first it would bleed out into the rest of my bath bomb um whereas if i paint that color last it's less likely to bleed so i feel like that was so organized oh my god sometimes the more organized i am the less oh, well these things go <laughs> So we're going to see, like, when I decide the night before or the day before what are, like, I usually have a pretty good general idea of what my schedule is going to be, but I kind of keep it open to, like, change things around as needed for um, for the Make With Me Mondays. Sometimes the supplier will send me a new mold and it, like, inspires me. I get really excited by it. So I'll kind of switch up my plans. Uh, but for the most part, <laughs> the more far in advance, I think I know what's going to happen. The less, the more chaotic I think it tends to be. So gee, that's all to say this was very well planned. <laughs> so bless you. Okay. We're about to find out. Okay. I'm just pulling some paint brushes and we're going to get started. So I'm going to do one complete one. And then what I usually do is I do one complete one decide whether or not I like the way it looks, and then I'll just kind of uh, assembly line the rest of them and do them just kind of, and then that it's faster that way. Because you paint one individually, it just takes longer. Um, Francis is asking on Facebook, do you reuse your paints? I keep mine in little plastic baby food containers and close them when not using. Yes. So as you can see, I used to like clean my paint pots before a live because I was like really self-conscious about you guys seeing how dirty the edges get but I just don't have the energy to do that um anymore so um I reuse the paint pots and actually because I use 91 percent isopropyl alcohol the paint the the alcohol evaporates out and usually your paint is just kind of left like dusty in the container and then if I add some polysorbate 80 to it it'll kind of have a little bit of like goo for lack of a better word left in the bottom of the container, but that's fine. It rehydrates and everything fine. So yeah, I reuse them. I'm wondering if these are supposed to be his boots, but I just don't feel like they are. I feel like this is a nutcracker and he's standing on a ledge. So that's what I'm going to go with. Um, and when you're painting with, rubbing alcohol if your paint is coming out or it as you're painting it's kind of blooming onto the bath bomb and like looking thin um why are you guys all sticking together that's concerning <laughs> um but if it's stick if it's if it's coming out thin and you're not having like smooth coverage it should just be smooth across it if it's coming out thin then that means you have too much rubbing alcohol and you need to add a little bit more mica um if it's coming out if it's coming out really thick and you can kind of see blobby lines where your paint is 
like each brush stroke is creating like a blobby line, then you have too much mica and you need to add some more rubbing alcohol. Unfortunately, there's no like, there's no like ratio, like perfect ratio of mica to rubbing alcohol. And part of that is just the different pigments and oxides and stuff that create the mica. So like as a painter, oh, here's a question. Do we think his cuffs are gold or do we think his cuffs are black? These are the things, you know, um, but so, yeah, with painting, unfortunately, there's no like hard, fast rule for how much you need because each mic is going to be a little different. Black is always going to be really nice and thin and um, white is going to be thicker. Even a white mica is going to be thicker because it's made with titanium dioxide, which is a thicker pigment. So... That's all just to say there's no hard, fast rule. I'm sorry. I wish I could give you one, but there just isn't. Um, in my book, I do talk a lot about painting bath bombs in my book. And there is like a section where it shows like if your paint is too thin, it's going to look like this. If your paint is too thick, this is what it's going to look like. Um, I don't know if that helps, but that. That, that exists. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know what else to tell you. I did add a little bit of polysorbate 80 to this. I don't know if you guys saw that. Uh, just because I don't think that I've used firecracker to paint with yet. I've been using it a lot in soap to make my Christmas soaps and my holiday soaps. So I've been using it a lot in soap, but I haven't I don't know. I might have some, you know what? You can like ignore like most of what I say. Like people will be like, Ugh, just don't watch my YouTubes or don't rewatch the make with me Mondays. Cause I'll be like, this is the first time I've ever done this. And then like the very next one, I'll be like, this is the first time I've ever done this. And it's not true. It's not true. If I was ever in a police investigation you know you listen to true crime and you're like and they're like and then she changed her story and that was suspicious and I'm like god help me nobody die around me in mysterious circumstances because they're gonna ask me questions and I'm not gonna remember and I'm gonna be like determined that whatever version I'm giving them is the right version and then it's gonna come out that that's not true there's video camera of me at the Bucky's at that time. So maybe I did do it and all this stuff. And it's going to be like, it's not, it's not out of malice. I'm not trying to cover up crimes. I just, I have the memory of a squirrel, you know, actually they have a better memory than me. Cause they remember that they put pecans in my yard last year that now are turning into little baby trees. And I couldn't even remember that to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, okay. <laughs> Now that we got that out of the way. Um, so here we go. Here's his little jacket. Now this, okay. I'm not going to pretend, I'm not going to blow sunshine up your ass and tell you that hand painting is faster than painting with an airbrush. If you want to paint with an airbrush, go for it. In fact, I was thinking that after this live, I might go hop onto Patreon and do another live because I have another set of bath bombs. Hold on. Let me show you. They're so cute. Oh my gosh. I'm dying. I'm dying over how cute these are. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Boop. Ah. <laughs> Boop. Hold on. Hold on. Boop. Okay. <gasps> it says, it's the elf hat. And it says, oh my God, Santa, I know him. And then it's a little elf feet. And I was thinking that I debated today which one I was going to paint today. And I decided on the Nutcracker uh, because I think that I'm going to airbrush this one. So I didn't want to pull out my airbrush on a live. It's just annoying to me. So um, I might hype on, <laughs> hype on. I might hop onto Patreon after this and paint those. So um, I'm not going to pretend, though, that painting, like hand painting is faster. I just particularly find it enjoyable. Okay. So that's all. 
Um, Lisa says, you're still trying not to get, to get your bath bombs not to activate. When you're, are you trying to get them to not activate when you're painting them? Or are you trying to get them to not activate um, when, like after, like when you're making them? Because if it's when you're painting them, I'm just going to go ahead and talk and wait because there's always like a delay in response. Um, a lag on my end, not you. Okay. But um, if you're trying to get them to not activate when you're painting them, you do have to wait. I, I suggest a minimum of 24 hours, although you're going to see people who tell you you can paint them faster than that. I have found that it's more likely that I'm going to mess up my bath bomb if I paint them earlier. So I'm just of the opinion you should wait a minimum of 24 hours. It's honestly in your best interest. And uh, like really you take the time to make them. You take the time to make the embeds. You could just wait. You could just wait. And then you wait. You have to wait. I suggest you don't have to. I suggest waiting a further 24 hours after painting them to package them. So those are my suggestions. Do with it what you will. I'm not trying to tell you how to live your life, okay? Right now he looks like a cute little beef eater. His little white pants are cute. Um, let's do his face. This one will be a little, he'll be a little Caucasian fella. Okay. And then I have to decide if I want his beard to stay white or if I want his beard to be silver. Um, I'm actually decided I'm going to do a Nutcracker set. So um, I have these little mouse bath bombs that I got from Sophistication. And so I was like, okay, I'm gonna do a pack of three little mice a nutcracker and a ballet slipper. And then that will be my nutcracker set. And that'll be really cute. Um, why was I? Oh, but so here's the thing. This, the nutcracker story, it always kind of like skeeved me out. Cause it's like, is he supposed to be an adult? How old is the nutcracker and why is he with Clara. He I know when he changes into a prince he's like older. I still feel like the dude's not age appropriate for my girl Clara. Just going to put that out there. Uh, I'm not trying to cancel the nutcracker or anything. I'm just trying to say he's got a white beard. He maybe he has like what is that thing where like your hair grows white no matter how old you are? Albinism? I don't think he's an albino, though. If he is, then fine. I don't think he is, though. Okay. So I'm just saying it's always bothered me just a smidge that he seems to be significantly older than our girl, <laughs> Clara. And Sherry says on YouTube, hi, Robin. Hi, Sherry. How are you? Uh, did we decide on his cuffs? What do we think? Gold? Let me add the gold to his belt, and then we can decide on the cuffs. It takes more time to make them gold, but it might be a nice little touch. I don't know. Let's do his cuffs and then we'll see. Or right, let's do his belt and his buttons and we'll see. So these were made using the high humidity recipe. And sometimes I say like, okay, this isn't pure white. Like if I want a pure white bath bomb, I'll use this other recipe they're still very, very, very white. It's just that occasionally we'll get like somebody who's like kind of nitpicky or for whatever good reason they have. I'm not saying that they can't be nitpicky. You can be nitpicky if you want to. Uh, Lord knows I spend way too much time saying like, is that the right color? And like obsessing over if something's the right color. Okay, But uh, we'll get, you know, somebody who just feels like it's not, the right color and then they want to they want to make their life hard and in the pursuit of this correct color um all right here's our gold now i do also have lannister gold and that's more of like a holographic 
punch you in the face disco kind of gold. This is more of like an antique. Uh, it's more of like an antique. I don't know. Baroque period gold. But I do think that it's a nice gold. I didn't want this super sparkly gold for this. I just felt like it wouldn't be wouldn't be on brand and let's see if I can get I have a teeny tiny brush but it has I might have to clean it hold on I do have to clean it let's use you I normally don't clean my brushes as you can tell uh, because I'm just too lazy to do it <laughs> I mean there's just because also it's like you know the rubbing alcohol evaporates off of them so then you're just left with the mica color in there. But sometimes I do need it. Usually I have a very thin one that's white and a very thin one that is black. But uh, I need one to be gold right now. So that's what this is. Okay. And we're going to steady our hand on the side of the table and then add our little batons. And we're going to take a chance. And I think let's go for it. Let's make his, well, I don't know. Maybe his button should have been black. I don't know if there's enough contrast in there. Fortunately, it's very easy to put black over that gold. It'd be harder if I was trying to put gold over that black. So if you are trying to decide sometimes like what color something should be, um, that's just my suggestion. Start, start light, then go dark if you have to. Start light-sided and then go dark-sided as necessary. Uh, we need his little eyes to be black. Where did my little thin black one that I was going to use that I didn't use go? Hmm? Okay. We need his eyes to be black. This. Okay. And then, and then we'll get to his pants. I guess we're leaving his beard white for now. I might go back in later and paint it, but this still gives us a pretty general idea of what he's going to look like. Okay, now we're going to get to his pants. So this is the thing that I want to do last because this is most likely to bleed. Either way, it's highly likely that I will go around this when I'm done and paint the outside a different color. I don't always do it, but sometimes I do, you know, and... Um, Sometimes I feel like it makes it look nice and polished and finished. And then sometimes I feel like it's too much effort for the payout. It's just not worth it. Um, it just kind of depends. This guy has a lot of little intricate details inside there. So it may not be worth my time to go paint it on the outside a different color. I was thinking I was going to paint his boots, but now I did them too low and they're just going to look like shoes. So like right now he looks like he just has sneakers on. <sighs> Dang it. Let's give it a shot. I feel like he does need boots, right? It's like maybe that's this bottom part was his boots. I don't know. That's not a good brush. That brush needs to be retired. In fact, goodbye brush. It's very rare that I throw a brush away. So you just saw, mark your calendars, okay? You just saw me do something completely crazy. I threw one of my brushes away. They have to be pretty bad for me to throw them away. So I keep them forever. And I'm very loath to give up Halloween. I just want you guys to know I debated doing a Halloween thing today. But I didn't do it because I know that y'all are ready to be moving on to Christmas. And that's fine. But I didn't want to give it up. Okay, look at him. Doesn't he look cute? I think we should paint his beard, though, unfortunately. Uh, Sherry, Sherry says they're having trouble watching through the Facebook, um, but it could just be your phone. Girl, I don't know. It could be me. It could be your phone. It could be me. It could be my phone. It could be my shoddy internet, which is always acting crazy. 
Uh, let's let's do a silver beard just because. Mm, I don't know. Just because. And then if we don't like it, if it's too silvery, we can paint it white on top and then that'll make it kind of like a lighter silver color. Oh yeah, I can tell it's too dark. It's too dark for a little guy. Okay, well, we'll paint it white on top. And then for the next ones, we'll know. Just, mm, I don't know. I also thought about making each one slightly different, which is what I did for the pirates when I painted the pirates for my uh, pirate theme that I had. Each pirate was slightly different, and that was cute. But I think I'm just going to, you know, they're in an army. These are military men. And they should be, you know, they should have standards for their uniforms, so... Okay, not bad. Not bad. Let's do his last little touch. Let's make his little cheeks rosy because, just because. He may not like that. I don't care. He's getting it. Okay, so there we have our little guy. I think the next one I'll do is buttons black. But that's a good, does his top hat look like a top? It doesn't, it's not supposed to be a top hat. It's supposed to be like a beef eaters hat, right? I don't know. Anyway, let's paint a couple more. Okay. This time, let's assembly line them. So spray with 91% rubbing alcohol. Spray with 91% rubbing alcohol. Um, okay. I think there are questions about which nutcracker guy this is. Um, and then Nectaria said this is the inedible soaps one. Or she believes that. And that's correct. This uh, nutcracker mold is from inedible soaps. Although I have seen that Sophistication also has one. And I just didn't like, I had already ordered this one. And I don't know if Kata has done it or not this year. So I don't know about that. But I have, like, I've seen them pop up this year, which is the first year they popped up. And I'm super happy about it. I actually, okay, I'll take that back. I've had vacuum form ones, but they were really big. And I just, I, I don't mind vacuum form molds, but one of the things that kind of irritates me about them is that they tend to be just way too big or way too small. And if they're really, really big, you're like stuck. Like if a, if a 3D printed mold is too big, you can generally like, un, like fill it less so it's thinner. So if it's like big and wide, you can fill it less so it's thinner. So like last night I was making the gingerbread houses from Kata and it's really big, but I was able to make them thinner so that the bath bombs stayed around five ounces, which is going to translate to about a $10 bath bomb. It depends on what the final weight is, but it's going to be about a $10 bath bomb. I'm try I try not to charge my customers more than about $10 for a bath bomb. So I try to keep the weights lower like that. So I don't know. That could just be me, but that is kind of my goal when I'm like doing this is that anyway. So it's, you can't really control the weight as much with a vacuum form mold. Like it's going to take as much as it's going to take. And then you can't now a lot of vacuum form Makers can resize it for you, which, you know, I don't know how much easier that is. But a lot of them, what what a lot of them are doing is they have a 3D printer and then they create a 3D printed form and then they put that in their vacuum former and then use like PLA plastic or whatever they use. Um, and then it shrinks down. They heat it. They heat the sheet of plastic. It shrinks down over it and then they get the shape. And then that's how you get your mold. So it's possible that they can um do the sizes differently you know make them smaller or bigger but i don't know that's just my it's just my two cents okay but i know that there are people who stand uh vacuum form molds and like they will they love them they'll use them till they die so that's fine also <laughs> like either way is fine i have no judgment either way Okay, uh, let's do his eyes because we know his eyes are going to need to be black. And I'm going to make his buttons black this time too. 
So you can see how if you're doing it like assembly line like this, how it can be a lot faster than doing each one individually, every single little detail. Um, or you could airbrush it if you're into that. I'm not, I have it. I have an airbrush. It's very cheap. <laughs> Just because I don't use it very often. I use it maybe two or three times a year. If you're like really into airbrushing, you fall in love with it. You want it to be like, this is your whole personality now. Um, there is a Facebook group just for people who airbrush, which I'm in. I just I'm not active in it or anything, but like it exists. And um, there's also suggestions. I've seen most people suggest getting the Iwata Neo. I might be wrong about that. Feel free to correct me. My airbrush fanatics. Um, and then a lot of mold makers now are making stencils for their bath bombs. So you buy the mold um, and then you can buy a stencil. You put the stencil over it. I'm, I'm sure like this would be many multi pieces for a stencil, but it exists is what I'm saying. I'm here for you. I'm going to support all your choices. Except that right now I'm trying to figure out what I did with my skin tone brush. And I probably used it for something else that I wasn't supposed to use it for. Mm -mm -mm. My bad. Let's check out these. These blue ones are like, no, it's these silver ones were like my favorite. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, YouTube. These silver ones, no, this is blue. But the silver ones <laughs> were my favorite ones forever. Um, my husband got me one year for Christmas, like 5,000 paint brushes. He just went down to like the art supply store and was like, my wife is an art teacher and she needs 9,000 paint brushes. And, ah, oh, I just painted his face gold. <laughs> He's, that's not right. You're not supposed to be gold, sir. Um, Anyway, so they were all like teacher's brushes. And it was like this big teacher's pack of brushes. And I loved them. And I can't find them anymore. The blue ones are similar, but not quite as good. I'm not going to lie. Okay. So let's make this guy. Um, we're going to put, we're going to put uh, honey blush. And then we'll do um, sexy stranger on a train on top of the honey blush. And so we'll make him a little bit darker skin tone. And then the other one, we'll do white first, and then we'll do honey blush on top of that, and then he will be a little bit lighter of a skin tone. And, uh, well, no. Let's do let's do Sexy Stranger on a Train on, the, on top of this one, and then the next one we'll do Sexy Stranger on a Train. We'll flip-flop it. So you can see how it affects the color if you paint one color under or over. You would think that it, the outcome would be the same, but it's not. So I'm here to tell you that it's not the exact same outcome. So that is silver. We don't want you. We want this one. Okay. So if we paint the honey blush first and then put our darker brown on top of it, we're going to get one skin tone. You could just do sexy stranger on a train first but it doesn't come out to me looking like skin. It comes out like too, um, like it comes out looking dull. Like it doesn't have a, it doesn't have those reddish notes for that show that like this is living skin. Right. And so that's why I like to start with the honey blush because it has like some red notes in it. You could also use red rum from, um, Mad Micah's and Red Rum has those reddish notes to it. But you do want to have like some red in there because there's blood underneath. There should be blood underneath that skin. And I feel like if you just do the dark brown, it kind of like loses the look of skin, in my opinion. But that's just my opinion. Could be wrong. Could be very wrong. And... um. I do like highly encourage you guys when you're asking in the Facebook group, I've thought about like making it a rule and I don't want to make it a rule. I don't want to go there, but I have thought about um, 
just, you know, asking you guys to make sure that when you are using language, asking like, what's a good skin tone? What's a good mica for skin tone? To make sure that you're kind of being specific about what that means to you because there's a whole range of skin tones. And um, I think that it's important to know that like, what you mean by that? Do you mean pale? Do you mean like darker? So I'm not like going to go in there and make that a rule or anything, but it is something that, you know, sometimes I see that and I'm like, that's, it's just not, a, it's just, you're not going to get as much help because that can mean anything to anybody. So to be more specific about that kind of ask, you know, just saying, not trying to rock anybody's boat or anything. It's just something I've had on my mind. I see that question sometimes and I'm like, well, I mean, what does that mean to you though? You know? So, okay. So you can see the differences. Maybe you can. So this guy's just going to come out looking darker and this guy's going to come out looking fairer. And you can see, actually, I think you can see it even better on YouTube than on the Facebook. So this one has the honey blush underneath and the this one has the honey blush underneath and then the darker brown on top. This one has the darker brown underneath and then the lighter tone on top. So I think, you know, this is a really good example. This is the same color. These are the two exact same colors, but you can see that they come out differently depending on how you layer them. So anyway. Those are how I would handle skin tones. Yay. Let's move on to his jacket. Okay. All right. Um, so, Elisa says, you're going to try my bath bomb re recipe tomorrow. And because maybe it's time. Try it and see. Let us know how it goes. Um, I would start with like, I would start with doing like a quarter batch, you know, do a quarter batch. Don't make like a huge big batch the very first time that you're trying something. I think that that is my best advice that I could give you and, and then good luck. And then also make sure that, so like right now my humidity in here is 48%, but it feels very humid to me. We have weather coming through. We have, oh, it's cold outside. See, I'm wearing my. I'm wearing my Christmas shirt. It says, wash your hands, you filthy animal, uh, which is, this is available on our Etsy. But anyway, um, yeah, we have cold weather coming through. It's going to be in the 40s. <sighs> it's practically freezing outside. So this is exciting. This is exciting thing. So yeah, if you have weather, like, so even though my humidity in here says that it's low for me. 48% is low for me. Um, I still might try to get the high humidity recipe <laughs> because it feels humid. And then if I feel, if it's not like coming together, y'all see me do this, but I just open the door, <laughs> let all that humidity in, you know, I also had hygrometers that uh, I had my dehumidifier running through the night because I knew I was going to be in here painting bath bombs. And I had fresh baby bath bombs just made last night. So not for a baby, but, you know, they are new to this world, that type of baby. Um, I saw another thing that Priscilla says, how do I mix the dye? So um, after this is done, you can, like, go back and rewatch the start if you want to. But this is mica. This, and uh, these are micas that are approved for use in bath bombs and or they're marked as safe for use on lips. And um, I just add some isopropyl rubbing alcohol. It's one of those things where you kind of just have to, you kind of just have to do it over and over. <laughs> and then eventually, like one day it just makes sense. So if you're practicing, if you're, still new to painting bath bombs, I would suggest that like any old or broken bath bombs that you have, which I feel like all bath bomb makers have them, um, any old or broken bath bombs you have, save those, use those to practice your painting on, and uh, you'll get to where you can just eyeball it and see in the pot how it, 
how the mix looks. And then also, once you go to put that first paint stroke down, you'll get a pretty good idea of how uh, your paint's going to turn out. So just my two cents there. Okay, so we have one jacket down. I mean, you could leave his pants away. I think I've seen, I've seen, um, I've seen nutcrackers that have white pants. I've also seen them that have blue pants. So I almost did his pants blue, but I liked the idea of doing that dark green, which by the way, that dark green turned out so pretty. Like that is the perfect dark Christmas green in my opinion. So those turned out really good. So that was a blend of TKB's Dublin Green and Shimmer Apple Pop, which are both approved for use on lips. So huzzah, you know. <laughs> okay, so Matthew Perry died. I'm not laughing about that. That's sad. I will have to say, though, I was at a party when somebody was like read it off their phone and I was like, who is that again? Like, I was like, oh, that's sad. But then, like, I wasn't sure who that was. I've, I've never watched an episode of Friends intentionally. So I may have just, you might, you might right now just being like unfollow. Okay, because this is heresy or something to you. But I just never intentionally watched an episode of Friends. I kind of know what the show is about. It's about some friends that live in New York City and have a very lavish apartment, which I highly doubt that they could afford in New York City. Um, and you have like the neurotic skinny guy and you have the hey you guys guy. And then you have like the cute guy, you know. Anyway, I had to I had to Google it. I'm sorry I did. But anyway, so then last night I was working on a um, I was working on a soap and I was making these little soap dough pine cones for my soap. And it was, they're really cute. And my husband walked by and um, after I tell this story, he might divorce me. So if he does, uh, I'm in I'm in the market and I just need somebody to take care of me um, anyway. Uh, so. So he walks by and he sees these little pine cones I'm making. And he's like, oh, those are cute. Um, they could double as peach pits. And I was like, peach pits? Why would I do peach pits? Like, pe I don't, what? Why? Like, I don't even understand why you would do that. And he was like, as a tribute to Matthew Perry. And I'm like, I still am not tracking. I have no clue what you are talking about. And he's like, the bar that they went to in 90210 was called the Peach Pit. And I was like, you watch 90210. And he was like, stop. And I was like, you like 90210. And he was like, my parents watched it. And I was like, oh, my God, you love 90210. And he was like, the girls were hot. So... I could not let that go. <laughs> he knew. I think he knew the minute he said that, that he had effed up. Because I was like, I am never going to let that go. I also, he was like, you've watched it before. I was like, no, sir, I have not. I never watched 90210. My parents wouldn't let me watch Full House because there were multiple men living in the house in San Francisco. And they thought it was about the gay. And so, you know, they didn't want me to become the gay either. And so they did not let me watch that. They were mm, hyper vigilant. I, I'll stop there. Okay. Anyway, there's no way they would have let me watch 90210. So did not watch that. Sure didn't. Anyway, that's cute. We actually have had a few conversations before where, you know, you're like talking to your spouse and you're like, you can't ever die because who will take care of me? And then uh, he's like, hmm. Okay, wait, I got to do their hands. I forgot to do their hands when I was doing their skin tones. Um, he's like, I'm sure there are plenty of people in your Facebook group who would be willing to take care of you. And I'm like, oh, you're probably right. <laughs> but uh, yeah. 
So he might divorce me though after that because they just ratted him out, but whatever. Okay. We're going to do their little skin tones and then, and then we'll go to their belt and their pants and there we're almost done. I mean, okay. So let me see the time. It's, it's, I'm not going to argue that this is the most time efficient way to paint bath bombs, but I love doing it personally. If you don't like it, if it's a chore to you, then don't do it. You know, people have gone since the dawn of time without painted bath bombs. They're kind of a new-ish thing. Uh, they're newer, you know. In the, in the ice age, do you think people were painting their bath bombs? No, they weren't. So it's okay. You could do multiple colors and then not painted and it would be fine. You can go to Lush and see bath bombs like that all the time. So it's fine. People pay lots of money for those ugly bath bombs. So like, trust me, you don't have to paint yours. Yours is still going to be better than theirs. I'm just saying, if you do enjoy painting them, this is how I do it. Okay. Linda said, I did not subscribe to this uh, and you're charging me. Hmm, I'm sorry. I don't know what that means. I'll have to look it up. I don't think that I can charge you, though, on YouTube. So, uh, we'll we'll look into that, okay? Uh, what else do we have going on? <laughs> Kathy says, your husband watched 90210. That's what I'm saying. I just I kept, I was like, you watched 90210. Although, I mean, I'm watching Charmed right now because it's, October. So I'm watching Charmed. And I mean, that's how I know Shannon Dortry or whatever you say her last name is from 902. Not from 902. It was from Charmed. So I'm not like arguing that I have better taste in TV. Okay. I'm just saying I like to tease this man. And sometimes he'll say, why do you tease me so much? And I'm like, that's how I show I love you and care. If I'm nice to you, not you guys, right? But like in person, like if I never razz you, if I never like pick on you at all, then I might not like you in person, not online. Because online, I try not to do that because it can come across like weird and people don't get like the like innuendos and you miss, like, you know, there's just something lacking, right, when we are picking on each other online. It gets mean real fast, so that's not my goal. So not online, but in person. If I've never picked on you ever, I don't know, because the people I really like are the people that I pick on till they're crying. <laughs> like, how else do you show love to somebody? Uh so I'm debating what color I would do if I did an outline around him. I usually do black. And I do feel like black would pop really well. But his hat and his boots would maybe get lost a little bit. So I'm actually second guessing that. Although I just flooded that black area right there. So whatever. Um I don't know. I don't know that I will do anything around him, but sometimes I feel like it makes it pop really nicely if you do that. So I'm going to have to debate on that. I'm going to I'm gonna have to have a think on that. I do have a little place right here that I need to clean up and then we'll paint gold and then we'll be done with these. And then that's all for today, folks. But you know, Oh, sorry. Sorry, YouTube. For some reason, looking at them at a side angle in this, in YouTube, it looks like they look like cigarette cartons to me. I don't know why. I think I'm in like a couple freshy making groups on Facebook. And I've recently seen people using cigarette container things for their freshies. And I am pretty sure that freshies is like, I'm pretty sure that they're, mm, anyway, I, there's a lot of, Anyway, it's just weird. I'm like, no, why are we doing that? Ugh. But I don't know why. I'm not going to ask questions why. I'm just mostly there to observe. 
take in details, and then <laughs> learn from other people. But it is a little strange to me. I'm not going to lie. Ah, uh, do we think his buttons look better gold? Now that I see it, I think maybe his buttons look better gold. Can't win them all. My nose itches so bad. Oh, my God. Okay. All right. Let us finish this up. Oh, I still have to do his beard. Hmm. Okay. Well, there's that. All right. So, oh, Danielle says, hello, hello. Oh, silver buttons, we say. Silver buttons. Okay. Well, can we mix our metals? Do we mix silver and gold? Are we that brave to have silver and gold on this little fella? Let's see if I can turn his butt. Oh, I can still turn him gold. Okay. Not bad. Okay, I'm going to do this guy's buttons gold, too. I think it looks better. It is chilly in here. I need to turn on my space heater. I need to go dig it out from where it's, like, buried underneath stuff. But, okay. Let's do his beard, and then, we'll, and then we'll be done. I know I keep saying, like, and then we'll be done. And it's, like, lies, but I don't know what to tell you. Okay. Silver. These, these silicone cups I really like. The other ones are super thin. I almost bought a whole nother pack on Amazon this weekend. And then I had to remind myself that I don't need it. I don't need it. I've done fine without more cups for like a long time. But I don't like the little floppy ones. The dark pink ones I got pre-COVID. Not saying it's COVID's fault, but like everything is COVID's fault right now. Still, to this day, we go into restaurants and in the South, in the South, we have white gravy. Yankees, have you heard of it? White gravy? It's like what comes on like biscuits and gravy or chicken fried steak. You may not even know these foods. Okay. So white gravy. And... If previously you could get white gravy anywhere. You can get white gravy at Whataburger. And now restaurants will tell you that they can't give you white gravy. Like Outback. Not that I'm saying like Outback is the bastion of Southern cooking. Okay, I understand that. But they did used to have white gravy. And now they don't have it. And their reason is because of COVID. Which I'm not really sure how COVID caused a scarcity of pig fat and flour that is used to make white gravy. Not sure I understand that, but that's what that's what they said. Now they won't I don't think that they can give an excuse for it now. They just look at you and stare at you like they, you know, like there's something wrong with you for even asking. But uh yeah because COVID. So that's our favorite reason around the house. Like when things go wrong or like the kids can't, you know, why is this? this? And we're like, because COVID. <laughs> and then we go YOLO. Am I right? And then they hate that. They roll their eyes and they hate that. <laughs> I got to give them something to talk to the therapist about whenever they grow up. Right. Okay. Maybe I'll do the behind, like the area behind him blue and I'll use like a TKB blue. That might be nice. Or maybe I'll do black. I don't know. As the last final touch, you know, I always add highlights. You didn't think I was going to walk away from this without adding highlights to him, right? So as the last final touch, I always add highlights to my bath bombs. So I would take the white mica and then just go along the edges hat because he's still in his toy form. He hasn't become the prince yet. So he's shiny. So add a highlight there. We're going to add a highlight down his leg, on his boot, down his little uniform, across here, down his arm. And I'll add another one down this arm. 
and right here. And that's it, I think. Oops, oh, not on his face. Because he's still just the doll. He hasn't become alive yet. I think on his face that looks pretty bad. So let me fix that real quick. But other than that, it's good. It's good. Okay. Yep, still looks bad on his face. Okay. <laughs> hold on, hold on. We're almost done. There we go. There we go. There we go. Okay. And that'll dry. They'll dry the same color. It'll be fine. Also, I don't like it on his eyes, but whatever. We're done. Look how good he looks with this little highlight going down him. Okay. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I'm going to hop on to Patreon to finish these and possibly to paint the Oh My God Santa I Know Him elf ones. Uh, just kind of depends on time. I have to pick my kid up eventually from school. Um, if you have any questions, you can ask them and I will try to answer them. Um, Carrie asks on um, YouTube, did I spray my bath bombs with alcohol um, first? Yes. I spray them with rubbing alcohol first before I paint them. I feel like it helps the paint spread better when you do that. Uh, Kathy says, it's COVID's fault. Everything's cheaper made and more expensive. Oh, it's so true. Okay. It's like so true. Um, anyway, thank you guys for hanging out with me today. I will leave links in the description so you can find, I don't know, this shirt that says, wash your hands, you filthy animal. Um, the mold, the micas I use, stuff like that. I'll leave links in the description. And that's pretty much it for today. But for See you later. Happy making. Boop. Bye.